Hey, it's a brand new season here at On The Path, and we are excited. We are speaking with the cast of The Chosen. Coming up next, we are speaking with Catherine Lidstone, who plays Mary, and Demetrius Troy, who plays Lazarus. And I get to sit down with Lazarus and Mary and talk to them about how they prepare for their roles, uh, what they are learning as they are journeying with the cast and crew of The Chosen, why The Chosen is such a global phenomenon that it is, and also a very special message from Catherine to every single woman out there for Women's History Month. Guys, you don't want to miss this very vulnerable and raw interview. It was such a blessing available on all podcast platforms watch it on yes tv in canada or stream it into the castle.com and in the states available on all streaming platforms guys i will see you on the path you're listening to on the path podcast with cheryl nemhart brought to you by fight for freedom follow cheryl nemhart on all social media platforms Hey guys, welcome to On The Path. Uh, it's your host, it's your girl, Cheryl. I am so excited to be with these powerhouses. Let me tell you, I have stocked them in a healthy way. Thank <laughs> you. Don't get scared, people. Uh, I'm here with Catherine Lidstone, who plays Mary, and Demetrius Troy, who plays Lazarus, from the global phenomenon. Can you believe that we're actually saying those words? Right? Like, yes. what has happened? Wild. Wild. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> of the chosen i'm so thankful that you're taking the time hey guys welcome to on the path thank, thank you, you so much us. yeah well listen i know that uh you are in heavy uh sort of like press season push 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 i know i was trying to think of some fresh questions for you i hope that i i land it uh in a good way i'm sure I'd you're gonna it. <laughs> Uh, we, we, uh, thank you so much. Good night, everyone. We've <laughs> it's been great. great yeah. it's been great. Thank you so much for watching on the path. Uh, hey, listen, we we are nationwide uh, in, in in broadcast here in Canada as well. Canada loves the chosen, and uh, obviously, we know the states is just obsessed. But I'd love to know um, wh what do you attribute this to? This sort of like gravitating this this swell, this movement that is the chosen, just some of your thoughts around why it's clicking in such a big way. I think what they've harnessed is the artistry. I feel like everyone who came at this project came with the highest level of excellence in storytelling, in visual storytelling, in their departments. The, when you go to the set, the set design is astounding. It really immerses you in the world. And I think what our actors are nailing is they're, they're on the path, they're on the journey with these characters. They're figuring out what's important to them. What are they going through on a daily basis? What questions do they have? What struggles are they going through? And it's not, it's not being approached in a pretentious manner at all. It's, it's, it's being approached very humbly as to what is the truth. And I think truth resonates everywhere. So I think that's probably part of the reason it's become such a global sensation. <laughs> so good. Demetrius, your thoughts. Yeah, I think that people are thirsty for the, for the very human message that the mm -hmm. show brings us. Um, you know, there's a lot of things in entertainment that kind of don't advance, you know, our souls and our hearts. And this show really brings that to the forefront, whether you are of the faith or, or not of the faith, there's still a human element to it that mm -hmm. people can, can find in themselves, you know, simple, you know, beautiful messages of forgiveness and, you know, and love. And that's all in, in the, in, in our show. And then you have uh, a, a team of professionals um, and actors who every day are taking care of each other on set in these emotional places that we have to go. And we're all, as writers, as actors, as stage crew, uh, we're bringing our hearts to the set. Mm -hmm. I think people see that. I think people are seeing yeah. that. Yeah, I love that. Age old themes of redemption, love, community, family. Um, I, I'm just, I, it's been brilliant. I'd love to know, how do you guys individually prepare for your role? What's your method? What's your process? I feel like mine changes every project, but I, I, yeah, I think specifically for this character, because she's an iconic woman of history, she's been written about in these scripture passages, and we have so much information 
you know, culturally, archaeologically, historically about this, these times, it was a lot of research initially. And it was just trying to figure out, okay, she's, she's got, you know, a heart posture, she's got a mental space she's coming from, and living in during these experiences, how close can I get to that? How much can I study? How much can I read these passages? And, you know, I even, because she's so well known for her worship, I, I was listening to worship playlists that I had been creating on the way to set at six o'clock in the morning. And yeah, so just really trying to get into that space of how does she see the world? How does she see Jesus? And, and just doing my best to emulate that. It's, it's a tall task, but I think everyone on our little family is doing a beautiful job. So, so good. Demetrius, how about you? Yeah. Catherine touched on, uh, I mean, something you touched on is that every role that you play you know, yes, you have your your craft, you have your way in, but every role demands something different of you if mm-hmm. you know, you're if you're listening. And um, with this this show, there was something that was a a, a real blessing in my relationship, um, being able to play Lazarus and bring uh, John, Jonathan and I are our old friends way before. You know, I've been working with Dallas and Jonathan since way before the Chosen, and to be able to bring our friendship. Uh, uh, to the screen and it's just it's it's half the work right there but when you look at for me when i i, I guess to simply put it i you know i look at the the lines as a broken dna structure and everything else i have to bring myself to that and that's when that's when we start hitting on the truth you know we start hitting on real moments when we get to the sets you know you get you know you get past the basic work of memorizing your lines it's like how do you memorize all those lines and it's like you know <laughs> You're, you're looking for the wants and needs of the character. What are they fighting for? What do they believe in? I mean, you know what you're saying. You know what the, the, the scene is about. Those lines will come to you, but they'll come to you in a, a, in a very truthful way. And then it's a matter of looking your partner in the eyes on set and, um, and speaking the truth. Mm. You know, I, when I think about the two of you, uh, you have this unique uh, I would say opportunity, not challenge, uh, that you are, you are, you're not sort of this created, uh, out of the text character that adds sort of color and shape to the narrative. You are, you know, well known from the biblical text. I wonder, does that leave any room for creative play? Can you bring, oh, absolutely. Uh, talk to me about that. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, any historical character that you may be playing, even if biblical or not, um, you, you can't fall for the trap as an actor by, you know, locking into other people's interpretations of, of that character. Um, every actor is unique. It's why we see Hamlet being played all the time. I'm doing Richard III downtown um, uh, for Chicago Shakespeare. I have a show tonight. And um, the, because we're all uniquely different, we bring different unique experiences. Somebody else could have played Lazarus and brought another unique perspective to that role. And it would, you know, God willing, would have been just as beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, everybody brings something different to it. And that's when you have room for play. Uh, yeah. And you're on a set with, with people that are open and, and are ready to bring their hearts to it. You, you find those little eccentricities. You know, the, the script gives you a structure. The director, Dallas, gives you a structure to play in. And that's, we have freedom to play within that. And there's so many different colors that we can bring. So. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I li- what I like to think about in moments like this is just to remember that God is the ultimate creator, right? So we have these guardrails in place of what the scripture says about these characters. But I think just the nature of this being such a creative business and having a team that chose you and then having uh, your own human experience and then having your own prayer life or worship life or whatever it is, I feel like he can infuse, right? He can infuse you with inspiration and you can bring whatever that is to, to the part. So that's been a joy to explore that and seek that and hope that it shows on camera. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I just love it. Now, uh, Dimitros, if you will, I, I'd love to ask uh, Catherine a question, if I may. Um, <laughs> if this is your show. Uh, yes, uh, you may. Um, Actually, you know, yeah. To ask my sister, my show sister. 
Um, well, listen, Catherine, it, you know, I recently had the privilege of being at a, a huge uh, press rollout here in Canada with Tyler and Ryan, got to sit with them, talk to them about the joys of building out uh, one of their biggest accomplishments, they said, is building out these strong, multi-layered roles for women, uh, women, women portrayed in perhaps uh, a fresher way, a different way, an out-of-the-box way that traditional sort of church structures may view women. I want to know as we kind of are on the doorstep of Women's Month, um, speak to me about what it means to you to play this multi layered, strong woman, but also just being on set with all of these beautiful, sort of like um, takes, these bold takes on women. Yes, um, I think it's such a beautiful gift, and I can't describe to you how many biblical moments there are that would suggest that this is the nature of women in general. We have the very first appearance of a woman is Eve. And in the Hebrew, original Hebrew, she's described as Ezer Kenegdo, because the man wasn't meant to be alone. That term is only used a few times in the Bible. And every time it's used, it's actually referring to the Savior. Yes. And the Lord. And warrior. And, mm -hmm. warrior. and so when the Lord brings the help meet, that is, I think, such an inadequate term to describe a woman's role on this earth. So just beginning from Genesis, you see the significance of a woman. And, um, you know, you think of the biblical characters, you think of Deborah, you think, you know, someone who's saying to Baruch, hey, I'll go fix this problem, but it will go down in history that a woman did it. And I'm asking you if you would like the opportunity to save this people and help this situation. And Baruch says, I will only go if you go. And then we have, you know, the Proverbs 31 woman that people quote all the time. She is running a business. She is she she goes far and wide to get food for her household. She is the first person awake in her household to make meat for her helpers. So these people, these women are very multifaceted. They have a beautiful gifting from the Lord and it's expansive and it's powerful. And to deny that truth would be I think a very foolish mistake. So I think what this, these writers have done is really honor who God made women to be. And they're, they are assets to the ministry, they're assets to their husbands, they're assets to business and the world. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of this. Whenever I hear, you know, people having a, a meeker sort of idea of what a woman is, I just think to myself, I don't think you've read the Bible. I, I actually don't think you know what a woman is according to God. So yeah, I, I'm very privileged. And I think, you know, powerhouse is a beautiful word. I, I remember Elizabeth Tabish used that when she was describing the other women um, at a, one of the press conferences that she did. And that's that's what I've experienced is just a lot of love and support for the ladies on set. So and from the ladies on set. So we, we've had a blast. And I just I'm honored to be telling the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, a. OK, Catherine. <laughs> You're amazing. B, uh, we're just going to call up the choir to come at this time. Uh, we're going to collect the offering. <laughs> near my God to thee and E. Listen, somebody is preaching in this room and it ain't me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's funny. Oh, goodness. That was so, so, so good. What a soundbite for uh, Women's Month as we enter. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, guys, I know I've got just a minute left. I've got a speed round for you. Okay. Ooh, just I love it. it at the same time here we go cake or pie pie every time every uh, time I, I, I neither oh what <laughs> I'm, I'm a savory guy okay oh my gosh listen these are important life questions here. what about baklava demetrius <laughs> come on now i make a good baklava but still, i'd rather end with a steak hey, i know a few words ticanes demetrius uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's it that's it um here we go guys uh tea or coffee okay. no. <gasps> tea coffee okay but i'm drinking tea right now <laughs> and i'm drinking coffee ironically. i love it i got two more for you superhero films or comedy 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 mm -hmm. comedy comedy will save you yeah <laughs> this one's gonna start wars just be prepared for some from, for some pushback beyonce or taylor swift <gasps> Ooh. Oh, I'm going to say neither. This is my, this is my dessert choice. Neither. 
time with you on that. Um, okay, I've got a bonus that just came in that might be might bring a little bit more engagement. Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? Interesting. Um, I don't know if I have an answer. Aren't they the same person? <laughs> I know, that's, like they kind of fill a similar place. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna stand down. I'm they're both great down. actors. They're, I mean, they're both. Although Ryan Reynolds is Canadian, as we're on a Canadian show, maybe or no, is it Gosling? They're both, they're both Canadian. Canadian. Oh, that's hilarious! That's why we dropped them. Look at that. Well, I mean, they're no both winning Canadian. here. <laughs> <laughs> they're both heartthrobs. They're both Canadian. I just, you know what? I'm gonna bow. Oh, my <laughs> Guys, you've been so incredible. Listen, as I always wrap up. Uh, by the way, just a big shout out to Catherine Lidstone and Demetrius Troy for stopping by on the path. Listen, I always ask our, our guests this question as we exit the room. Uh, what is it time for in the world? And what is it not time for? Feel free to answer oh, either wow. one. It's time for peace, not for war. Amen. And uh, yeah, it's time for love and compassion. And I think it's not time for judgment on each other. I feel like we're always judging and we need a little more love and empathy and compassion. <laughs> we, 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 as people, we have more in common together, uh, yeah. we think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so good. As citizens. So good. Amen. Well, as they say, <laughs> let the church say amen. I want to thank Catherine <laughs> and Demetrius for being here on the path. Uh, thanks for taking the time, guys. You are beautiful souls, and we are cheering you Thank on you. and praying for you. Thank you so much. Thank Blessings you. to you. Thanks for having us. Wow, that was so much fun. I just had such a blast with these guys, it's such incredible people. And even when we stopped talking officially, we had a bit more to say. Guys, the cameras were still rolling. I want you to check out this bonus footage with Catherine Lidstone and Demetrius Troy. Fun countdown. Yeah, that was wonderful. Everything was wonderful, yeah, thank you. Catherine, I loved your answer for Women's Month. That was beautiful. Oh yeah, and I didn't even know it was Women's Month. Thanks for educating. I didn't know either. <laughs> Wasn't that profound? No, for real. Either. I mean, it's, it's very much what my wife and I see things as well. It's, it's like, you uh, know, we're in our household, we're a united front and we're first among equals. Yes. Yeah. It's like you're becoming Amen. one flesh. You become one flesh. Yes. You no. Know, it's like, I'm, yeah. the co I'm the cook in the family and she. Yeah. So we make. You know what I should have said? I was like, people like to say that if you, sub you know, women are expected to submit to their wives according to Paul writing, but they always leave out the second half of that, which is. Husbands, lay down your life for your wife. Exactly. exactly. And it's like, that is a, that's in tandem. You can't just pull one part of it. <laughs> it's, meant it's, to be why, it's why you become one flesh. Yes. Like, oh, man. Right. Anyway. I have a feeling, I have a feeling, Demetrius, you are, you've been raised and you are surrounded by strong women. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, see, my, my mother and father were both like United Front and they both came yeah. from very abusive backgrounds. Wow. Um, so, you know, I'm my woman, uh, my wife, my woman, my woman, my woman, <laughs> your warrior, you mean? No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by very f strong people of faith, mm -hmm. whether it be man or woman. Amen. Yeah. So good. And I can see that that shaped you so, so beautifully, man. I could talk to you guys forever. Thank you. Thank you. Mutual. You stayed a little bit longer. You hung out a bit more. I know. <laughs> And I Thank think you for uh, having I us. We're being called by Ashley. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. And yes. and great questions. But thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. God thank bless. you. Please tell them I didn't keep you here uh, at, at. No, uh, we'll say it was our fault. <laughs> I'll blame it on Catherine. Okay. Bye. All right, guys. Bye. See you. I still pinch myself thinking uh, how blessed am I to be able to speak with uh, the incredible cast of The Chosen and I just love the work that Catherine Lidstone and Demetrius Troy are doing and how they are bringing the characters of Mary and Lazarus to life. I tell you, uh, Lazarus is one of the most poignant uh, moments in the Bible for me. Uh, just a reminder that the God we serve is God of the impossible. He literally raises dead things to life. And I just want to encourage you, no matter what you're facing, what your situation is, uh, it may seem super overwhelming and super hard and just impossible. But can I remind you of the God that you serve? Can I remind you that the God you serve specializes in the impossible? And what is impossible for man 
is very possible with God. So don't lose hope, friend. Stay encouraged. I hope that this interview blessed you in some way. Listen, keep following and tracking with us. Uh, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Just look for Cheryl Nemhart on YouTube. And please hit su subscribe and uh, track with us as we post more content over there. You can also follow me on Instagram at Cheryl Nemhart. And I will see you guys very soon on the path. Thank you for listening to On the Path Podcast with Cheryl Nemhard, brought to you by Fight for Freedom. This has been an Exusia Media production.